Keynotes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to that web show where I feature artists who I believe deserve to be recognized. This is reaching out to the unfamous. Now, in case you haven't wondered, there is a guy who, for quite a few years now, has made his living on YouTube reviewing animations and occasionally breaking kayfabe and revealing his true self. Of course, I'm talking about the mysterious Mr. Enter. Also featured in this episode of Reaching Out, we have a guy who I know without question is by far one of the best up-and-coming artists that I have seen since I started this YouTube channel some five and some change years ago. And of course, I'm talking about Shannon R.L.S. Also known as Shannon Reels, also known as his first name Austin. I'll get to him later on. But, and I say this very lightly, the first person that I'm featuring in this episode is, of course, the mysterious Mr. Enter, also known by his first name, John. I'm not going to tell you his last name because I want to keep his identity, you know. I don't want to reveal his identity in full because if I do, then, then something really, really wicked or something cringe is going to happen and I'm probably going to have to take the brunt of it, obviously. But I saw a video of his. Earlier this morning, as of this recording, which was uploaded to his channel yesterday, entitled, YouTube's Copyright Problem Has a New Dirty Trick. Oh, oh, oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> See, I love it when, when he does this, when he does this YouTube's Copyright Problem Sucks thing, because... It is so close to home because everyone can relate to it. Because they've, they've all been victims of they've all been victims of it before. And this guy is no exception because my friends, he has been a victim of this for I don't know how long. And let me tell you straight up, this guy is absolute legit. And going on this four minute rant, which, which by the way, he did not want to do because his latest animated atrocity episode, of course, was uploaded by Creative Commons. He used the Creative Commons license in his, in his video, just like he does with every one of his reviews. Just like I do with my reviews and my web shows. So, Without further ado, I present to you Mysterious Mr. Enter's 4 minute and 20 second rant. 420, notice the weed reference people, or day 2. On the failed abortion that is YouTube's copyright system. And I'll get to the comment that I posted on it later, after I'm done. Mr. Renner, take, take it away, my friend. Well, this isn't something that I wanted to wake up to. This isn't a yeah. video that I wanted to make, because this isn't a video that I wanted to have to make. Hey, you guys, you know that YouTube's copyright system is kind of broken? Yeah, yeah, of course you know about that. Uh, did you know that it's even more broken than you thought it was? Because today I'm going to report on oh, hey, one of these earlier. earlier. Anyone else has ever talked about yet. Now, if you can see right here, on August 20th, my Total Drama Rama review will be taken down. How do I know this? Am I the one taking it down? No, I'm not the one taking it down. A quote-unquote copyright holder is. 
Today we're going to talk about the YouTube copyright system and a specific new way that companies are using this system to screw people over who don't deserve it. And by new, I mean they've been doing this for years. At least they've been doing this to me for years, since at least Norm of the North. So when a video is claimed, you can fight it. YouTube said that during this dispute it'll be monetized and the payout will go to the winner. It doesn't seem like they'd do that anymore. And it's back to the old system where it's not monetized at all. But I can handle that. I've handled that before. It's not like that really did anything. All the copyright holder had to do was decide that yes, they do want the money, even if they didn't deserve it, and claim that there was no fair use here. And then the money went to them anyway. <laughs> but let's talk about this new thing. You know how it's supposed to work by now. It gets tagged by a copyright owner or someone claiming to have copyright, you dispute it, the accuser has sole power to determine if you're guilty or not, because that is clearly how justice works, then you have the chance to appeal. Now what's supposed to happen is this. They can either rescind their copyright claim, or issue you a strike. But you know, there's a seldom heard third option. The copyright holder can decide they want your video down, but they can give you a week's worth of notice. This is why my Total Drama Rama review will be down in a week. It seems like a nice courtesy, but this option is actually so bad that I can see it as nothing more than an insult and another way the copyright holder, or the person claiming the copyright, is trying to insult me. You see, your options are on pause for a week. You can't fight until it's taken down. You can't issue a counter notification until it's taken down. If that's not bad enough, now it becomes monetized for them. Can you do anything about it? Yes, you can cancel your appeal. Then you can never, ever, ever appeal against that particular copyright holder ever again. On that particular video, at least. Even if they don't own the copyright. They're guaranteed yeah. with seven days of monetization. You did, Mr. Turner. And here's the kicker. You so show them the boss. Rama video do not own a total Those drama podcast or anything they got other shit on you. franchise. It was made by Teletoon, aired by Cartoon Network, which is owned by Turner Broadcasting. It was produced by Fresh TV and Neptune Studios. So who is Popcorn Studios? Like Shout Factory, these people are online distributors. And I'm getting really fucking sick of distributors copyright claiming my shit. It should not be within their power to do so. I'm not selling Total Drama episodes on their turf. And you could bet your ass that I'm going to specifically boycott anything else that they have the rights to distribute until they're no longer a distributor. Yes, even through other channels not owned by them, because anyone who works with these people I respect less as a company. Can they make this right? Yes. Either rescind their copyright claim, or, you know, I'd actually respect them more if they just took the video down now. But no, this cowardly, weaselly bullshit has got to stop. And this is to YouTube specifically. Get rid of this option. Either take my video down, or give me the option to take it down now. I'm not canceling my appeal. I will never cancel my appeal. That's just a stupid, stupid option that screws over a video indefinitely with no way to fight it. I also can't take the video down and just re-upload it because of the YouTube algorithm. When you take down or private a video, the YouTube algorithm thinks that you've lost the amount of views that are on it. And I'm not in a position where it's really safe to do that. During this time, I usually put my videos on private, but I don't think that's going to solve the problem. People need to know about the strange loophole in this system. And this is something that I genuinely demand that YouTube fix. There is no reason for this. It's not a courtesy as they think it is. It's... It's aggravating. This does nothing but screw over the users on the site. And it is just another bludgeon that copyright holders, or people who claim to be copyright holders, can use to bludgeon people. YouTube, this is actually probably dangerous for you. From the way I see it, with this option, you are knowingly hosting copyright infringing material on your website, which just might challenge your safe harbor provisions. If it's known to be copyright infringing, it must be removed as soon as possible. Not in seven days from now. And you know what the really funny thing is here? All of this is because my video was tagged to the Spanish version of Total Drama Rama. Yeah, yeah man! You, you get him, John! John. You, you got him, Mr. Runner, damn straight! And, and now, now let's, let's get, get to, to the, the comments. comments. Now, 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 this video compelled me to do a feature on him. Because let me tell you. Now, here's the thing. I loved a very, very, very inappropriate, but also... Unbelievably fitting comment on this video. Whereas this guy, who predated me by about a day, made a parody of YouTube's slogan. He said, just Ethan said, YouTube, broadcast yourself, but only if we say you're allowed to. Meanwhile, I came with a parody of the slogan on my own when I came up with the infamous. YouTube, we won't legally allow you to broadcast yourself because YouTube is run by faggot Nazi Catholics who never left PayPal and still have an account there in the fucking first place and have 
since they left PayPal, not touched it since 2005. Of course, I didn't include that last part there. I just cut it at the word PayPal. But you get where I'm coming from. The point is, and I'm saying this very lightly, as completely bare bones honest as I can. Oh, by the way, that Emoji Movie review that he did, have you guys seen that? My God. He just fucking killed that movie. He murdered the damn movie, and very deservedly so, because the way in which he did it was so decisive and so perfectly justifiable that if I had spent... $60 to watch that same movie, which in reality it wasn't a movie, it was a two and a half hour advertisement featuring memes and emoji faces who were otherwise given limbs of their own. I probably would have responded the exact same way. I kid, I kid you, you not, not, people. I, I shit you not. not. This, this is legitimate. legitimate. His, his review of the Emoji Movie and his, his latest upload uploaded yesterday as I'm recording this gives complete clarity in my mind that I should instantly feature this guy on this episode of Reaching Out. Now, as I've said, he does he does reviews for good animations, otherwise known as admirable animations, and the bad ones on the side, nicknamed animated atrocities. And boy, let me I'm not lying to you when I say that when it comes to animated reviews, he is the JD from New York 206 of animation reviewers, of animation critics. Because this guy, like JD from New York 2000, like JD from New York 2006, or 206, I should say, sorry about that, he tells it like it is. And let me tell you right now, this is why the mysterious Mr. Enter is that damn good. You better check out his stuff. You'll never be sorry. You'll never regret it. And now, on to our next feature. Shannon Rules. Of course, that's Rules spelled R-L-S, or R-L-Z, obviously. Yeah. Good thing I can correct myself so quickly, right? Yeah, let's just cut the shit in. And look at what we have here before us now. The deviant known as Shannon Rules. That's rules, spelled with the letters RLZ, by the way. Have you seen this guy's work? You know, he's been a deviant for over two years, but he just started uploading his deviations last month. So obviously, from what we may already or may not already know, this man probably had a stack of deviations in his gallery that he felt weren't suitable to be continued to be included. So, my best speculation, my best guess is that he deleted them all and probably stored them somewhere on a very large flash drive on a very large USB saving port to upload at a later date, which I believe he will. I don't really know for sure if that's the case, hence why I am speculating. But anyway, and with all thoughts and conclusions considered, he has close to three dozen deviations in his gallery. The first of which he uploaded, as I mentioned, last month. And let me tell you now, he specializes in 
quite a few mediums within the deviant, within the digital art genre, or subgenre, mind you. His first deviation, of course, is the only landscape that he has. And believe me when I say, it is absolutely beautiful. You cannot teach this kind of stuff in a school properly without trial in advance. Because this, this man, his first name is Austin by the way, it says so directly on his profile and you will see it too. Unless for some reason that changes at which point things are almost inevitably subject to change anyway. But the point is, since he uploaded that beautiful landscape he came up with quite a few portraits of various very Andro characters. And by the way, he is a very good artist at what he does, especially at making landscapes and characters. He even has a chip in his gallery. It's very small, albeit, but it is damn impressive. And it probably took a great chunk out of his day, too. So, I can't say that I'm surprised. This man, despite having not submitted anything for the first several years of his Deviant Art career, decided to post his first deviation last month in July, around the time of my birthday. We all know when that is. And since then he's developed quite a niche for drawing Andro Ferry characters, which I unanimously believe are drawn almost to complete perfection. Given sometimes when he draws, he doesn't have as much effort put into them. But, but that, that does, does not change the quality of said drawings, drawings nonetheless. Let me, let me, let me explain, explain something to you people, alright? This, this man... You, you cannot, cannot... I swear, you cannot come up with shit, shit like, like this on the fly without screwing up at least once and having to redo the whole thing again. But, but somehow... From what I can see here, Shannon Rules most likely got each of these done most likely on his first shot, on his first attempt, on his first try. That is how you can distinguish a stereotypical artist from a stereo-atypical artist. Keep in mind, stereotypical meaning typical and regular and humdrum and normal and stereo-atypical, of course, meaning he's gifted. Of course he's gifted, because reasons, right? So, obviously, this man has that it factor already after a month of submitting deviations starting from last month as of this recording. I'm going to tell you straight up this guy is legit. He has that strange quality about him that so many artists have but only so many are able to execute nearly as flawlessly as he does. And I know that I'm just probably kissing ass at this point, at which point it's not necessarily the purpose. Now, I will admit, he is a far better artist than I am. Far better than I'll ever be. 
when, when I draw, of course, of course the first thing I focus on when I'm drawing a character is the outlining. And that is piss poor at best. You can see my latest character drawings, and you can see it. All kidding aside, I shit you not. This, this very drawing, this caricature of myself, that, of course, the outlining is piss poor at best. And yet, I've done it long enough to where I've somehow grasped the understanding required to be remotely as good as this guy. Shannon Rules is the shit. He is the absolute shit at what he does. He is phenomenal. Especially with that first drawing of his that he submitted just last month. And that's considering both of the possibilities of what happened in the two years prior. So, it goes without saying, he is very good at passing it on in terms of memes, in terms of digital landscape art, in terms of character art. He even does gore from time to time. He does a little bit of NSFW too. Probably a little bit of the new stuff, which I'm obviously not going to include here, because it's probably going to give you all the impression that you want to wank off to Schnicke's first symphony. Of course, who wouldn't? That symphony alone is just in the first several, just in the first five and a half minutes, it is worthy of several consecutive mass erections. I mean, you've got, got to, to listen, listen to that. that. And, and there's, there's nothing, there's nothing unashamed about it. Because the man called Schnitke, when he wrote his first symphony, he wanted to sum up all of the world's failures, summed up in about five and a half minutes, which is what he did there. And then he added about 76 or 77 minutes extra added to that, actually, in, in the performing that I listened to, it was more like 72. But you understand. Back to Sun and Rules. This guy has very, very interesting art. Despite the fact that some of it might have been done slightly better, because I'm not going to dispute it, there still is room for improvement, even with a Chuck Jones level artist of his caliber. And you know you made it when your art is reminiscent of Chuck Jones, believe me, because his art, his animations, his cartoons, undisputedly are that damn good. Even 60 years after they were made, 70 years, because he started doing this in the 1940s. He stopped doing it around the time of his death, and by this point he was about 90 or 91. So, Shannon Rules, I know that you are listening to this, I'm pretty sure that you are aware of this that I am telling you all this now, but let me remind you, you are a very gifted artist who has it. You have that factor, legitimately. Your artwork is Chuck level, is Chuck Jones level awesomeness. It really is. And you know you've made it when you can get a compliment of that caliber, to know that your art somewhat reminiscent of a Chuck Jones or a William Hanna or a Joseph Barbera. You understand? And the picture next to my likeness was more than likely drawn traditionally 
but, but with digital reverberations, so to speak, when comparing it to a sonic composition as opposed to a visual composition. So, anyway, Shannon Rules, you are legit at what you do. You've got it, my friend. Absolutely, without question, you've got it. That's undeniable. Kevin, what's the final tally here as far as how many swear words we've used just in this episode long? Because I'm pretty sure that we've said quite a lot, haven't we? Yes, we have. Absolutely, there's, there's no question. But can you tell us how many? Oh, I don't keep track of that shit. Well, what you just said now tells me otherwise. Oh, shut up! This episode of Reaching Out and sponsored by the 400 BC philosopher Euripides, who reminds you all, even over 2400 years in death, that whomever God wishes and desires to destroy, he will always, always, always first make mad and drunk with power and democratic. And it's also been brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is brought to you and paid in part by Sickers Like You! Okay, get the hell out. The show's over. See you next time.